So we're at DTW24 Ignite in Copenhagen. It's the TM Forum's annual show. I'm here with uh, Fabio Cirone. He is the head of telco for EMEA at Amazon Web Services, AWS. Fabio, great to meet you. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. So, you know, the show has been going on for a, a couple of days here. You have uh, a great presence here up on the balcony uh, at this event, uh, the biggest space, I think, for any company uh, at the show, and obviously a lot of visitors and a lot of partners here as well. Now, what are the key trends that you've heard about that people are talking about at this show, and what is AWS offering to the people that are coming to see you? Yeah. No, you see, I think uh, uh, DTW this year is another great opportunity, great moment to acknowledge the compelling moment we are in as an industry. And not a surprise, everything is about generative AI, right? And so um, what I really felt in these two days is the acknowledgement that actually this technology is putting us in a place where the pace innovation is even higher than what we can absorb. And yeah. so the key thing that I hear about is the need to partner to succeed. If you want to solve uh, real customer problems, there is a clear willingness and commitment from different customers and partners to partner together. I will make uh, some examples. So this morning I was with uh, Amdocs and they delivered an amazing uh, demonstration about uh, how a coding body enabled by generative AI, we call it Amazon Q, can help them to reduce the cost and the lead time to modernize applications to move to cloud. And this is not new, it's just in continuation with the clear trend. That we started with British Telecom a couple of months ago, you might have seen the announcement. And if you look at the numbers, essentially, it's amazing. So British Telecom, in three months, they onboarded 12, Hundred software engineers, they produced 100,000 lines of code automatically through Amazon Q with a 37% of uh, accepted code first time. Kind of a 12% increase in productivity. There are some demos there, then we can go together. But this is a first concrete example about uh, what kind of content generative AI can deliver to telco players to do what? To do uh, automation in software coding. Amazing. There are other examples that you can see around uh, with Ericsson, for instance, where they're building a telco LLM trained on us, on AWS. And your story is to train that LLM on the huge information base that they have from their network to make uh, network troubleshooting and resolution automatic through a simple chat box. And the other example that I would call out is with uh, T-Mobile, and in this case about uh, run optimization, radio access network optimization. Again, through generative AI, that in this case, the content that is produced is optimization of radio access network. Again, it's a strong improvement in terms of uh, productivity. But again, the key theme that I see around is let's partner together. The problems are pretty clear, um, the solution is pretty clear, the technology, the underlying technology can be fairly complex and that's why it's super important to cooperate. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, partnerships and collaboration have been talked about for years, but now you can clearly see evidence of this happening and, and the results of that as well, so in the industry. So you, you mentioned a couple of uh, instances there of how Gen AI is sort of helping to, to shape and change the market and improve productivity. But it seems that there's a lot of potential um, use cases. Are, are, are there a lot that are, that are specific to the telecom sector, would you say? There are, um, I would say there is some specificity to the telco domain, and then there is a huge potential, which is just transversal to different industries. We can make some examples, right? One typical example is about uh, how do we reinvent uh, the customer interaction, the customer experience, the customer care. And so if you think about the legacy contact center, where you call, hey, I have a problem, the Artelco, my line doesn't work so well, and then you need to go through six or seven iterations in the, to the IVR, and after 10 minutes, no one is yeah answering yourself. Now, 
The way a generative AI uh, contact center can revolutionize the end customer experience is just mind blowing. So you need to think about uh, the new Gen AI based contact center like uh, a navigator for you. So imagine if you're driving in the streets of Rome, you would love to have a navigator that drives you yeah, into your end uh, direction. Now, the Gen AI based contact center for an agent who needs to answer questions is exactly like a navigator. Right. Because it essentially provides all the good answers based on a huge information base that the content, that the content center, the automated content center made avail makes available to the agent. Just an example, and we have done some uh, uh, massive projects. A uh, couple of examples in the telco, DISH in US and uh, VMO2 in UK. I think that's a, that's a great example of that. The other example that I would um, uh, put forward is, you have heard about uh, the Gen AI uh, Global Telco Alliance. So SKT, Deutsche Telekom, yeah. it is a lot. They're building a telco LLM for a simple reason that they see a huge advantage in building uh, an LLM which takes telco specific information to build a number of use cases. Mm -hmm. And again, it's all about uh, automation of the network, network configuration, network troubleshooting, and the end game will be autonomous network. We have been doing uh, many steps towards autonomous driving. Generative AI will be a fundamental enable for uh, uh, autonomous networks. And then uh, you can think about uh, players like uh, uh, the Ericsson, the Nokia, the Samsung of the world. All of them are in a path where they want to infuse generative AI to make uh, their software more usable and more efficient, to make sure that their R&D uh, is more productive. And again, the example that I made before about, about Amazon Q, is just an example about how generative AI can deliver a content that in that case is software coding, helping the network, the developers, software developers, focusing on something else with higher value. So again, it's a mix of uh, industry-specific use cases and, uh, let me say, uh, horizontal use cases that are about improving the customer experience, improving the employee efficiency, and uh, making the industry more uh, innovative overall. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, a great deal of chat about AI and Gen AI, specifically here at this event, but are there any other industry trends that you're, you've been hearing about or that people have been talking about with AWS? Sure, I would call out uh, uh, a couple of cases. Yeah, the first one is about uh, uh, the announcement that Telenor went out yesterday morning, which is a kind of uh, really um, mind-blowing. So Telenor announced that they will uh, partner with us, with AWS, to improve their digital sovereign posture in the Nordics, leveraging AWS uh, digital sovereign cloud by design. What does this mean? Essentially is that we will deploy AWS cloud infrastructure in a state-of-the-art data center that they're building out of Oslo, and they will position themselves as the key player to fulfill the regulatory requirements on digital sovereignty. Yeah? That is one piece that is absolutely in line with our strategy to play uh, a key role helping Europe to modernize digital transformation, being compliant with the regulations related to digital sovereignty. You might have heard that we will invest $7.8 billion in the next uh, few years in Germany to build the European Sovereign Cloud, which is a totally independent partition of cloud, and this will generate uh, 2,800 jobs in Germany to build and operate this brand new region. Telenor will leverage this value proposition. Okay. And this is one clear trend. The other clear trend is about uh, cloudification of the network. So um, one month and a half ago, we announced with the Telefonica Germany that they will deploy 5G core standalone on AWS based on a mix of uh, AWS region in Frankfurt, 
and outpost deployment in their data centers. Now, the problem that they wanted to solve is pretty clear. They wanted to have a much higher automation in the way they develop, they deploy, and they operate the network with a clear CI-CD pipeline where in, we inject our technology, in this case together with Nokia, to make sure that the level of automation is much higher and they use the elasticity of the cloud at pace. Uh, if you look at the journey, it took uh, more than two years of intense validation and testing and failure and success. But the moment that you go live with 5G core in the cloud, in a country like Germany, I think this is an historic milestone. Much more to come. The plan there is to deploy the 5G core for initial phase, for a standalone part, for 1 million subscribers, and then uh, take it forward. Mm -hmm. I think there is an iconic example about uh, how, after the massive IT migration to the cloud, now we are starting the journey for network cloudification on uh, AWS cloud. I think it's, it's also an example, and it was talked about here today, about how the telecom operators need to be bold in their choices and their decisions. And I think Malik uh, Rao at Telefonica Deutschland is one of those people who's prepared to, you know, take the next step and, and be a leader. So it's uh... it's absolutely true. You know, I'm used to say that uh, you need to identify and work with the key change agents, people who want to play the insurgent role. Now, Malik Rao, as you said, has been my partner in crime for almost five years now, and he has been bold since the very beginning. He was used to say. If we move web application into the cloud, this is not where we will gain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to move our core business into the cloud, yeah. and he did it. Yeah, with this step, essentially, he showed the world uh, as a, a change agent can really play the role to reinvent the way you build something that for years has been built in a very legacy way, and really leverage the advantages that the cloud can uh, bring to you. To your point, change agents uh, make history and uh, start new trends. Malik, for sure, is one of those. Absolutely. Okay, fantastic to hear the trends in the industry and what AWS is doing. So, Fabio, thanks very much for joining us today. Great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be with you.